What's up and welcome back to Yarnum FM, y'all. I am Marcus. I will be your hunter today. Uh, and before we get started today, I actually want to talk a little bit about some some lore I've been thinking about from last time. This is just what I've been thinking about. Um, last time we, we talked about the fact that they are using those baths in Yar Har Har. The school of Mensis was, was using baths for their rituals. And another thing we, we knew, we saw a bunch of bell ringing ladies and people were asking what the significance of those bells was. Uh, and I told you, like, all of the notes and things that we found in the games, game so far lead me to believe that they are trying to summon a god. Like, they're trying to create a god themselves and they are reaching out across the plains to do so. And... The bells are actually, thats I think that's the significance of the bells, is that they are reaching across worlds. Uh, this The bells were discovered in the old underground labyrinth, so there's a connection there with the old ones through that. But its ring resonates across worlds, and the first hunter used it as a special signal to call hunters from other worlds across the gap and uh, cooperate. So they're they're summoning across the plains and this is another really important point to me is the fact that the, it's the one reborn and what do we as hunters do when we die well we're reborn over and over and over and we've already talked about this mechanic that we are being reborn we are sustained by the dream and uh eileen's dialogue also kind of helped confirm this for us she said uh i no longer dream this is my last chance Kind of indicating that if she dies, that's it for her. She's not going to be reborn, and she knows it. So, it's very possible that the School of Mensis, or at least part of the School of Mensis, was trying to create this rebirth, and they are trying to basically duplicate what's been done with the Hunter's Dream, but uh, their methods are questionable. And that's something that we'll we'll examine as we proceed. But that's just, uh, I, I was thinking about it. It's It's really funny how much it actually mirrors what we've had what we've done as what we have as as far as us as hunters in the hunter's dream sorry i can't fucking talk but you guys are used to that let's go back to yar har har real quick for a little something something i've decided what i want to do first i want to do nightmare frontier before we do whoops before we do the Upper Cathedral Ward. For a couple of reasons, but primarily because, uh, A, it's easier, <laughs> so it's more fitting to do it while we're at a lower level, and B, we want to learn more about this guy, about these dudes. We, we really do. Uh, first, let's run up here. I want to demonstrate, too, that we can just come up here and get this... Ah! This crystal lizard, well, I mean, excuse me, wandering madness that we missed earlier. Didn't come up here and get it. Although we're under a hail of gunfire and there's an executioner, but uh, if you miss one of those guys, you can just run up, run down there and get it. Uh, now, to get to Nightmare Frontier, we're going to need a little help. First, you got to have tonsil stone to do this. We picked that up in the forest from a mysterious voice. And then... Have mercy on the poor bastard. <laughs> oh, amygdala. So, I don't pretend to be an expert on this, but uh, as a lot of people have realized, uh, amygdala is actually named after a part of the, of the brain. And I believe it's supposed to be the part of the brain that is partly responsible for controlling fear. Um, I'll put a link to Wikipedia or something in the description and you guys can can read more about that if you want to make those connections. I'm just going to stick to in-game stuff. But uh, we are now in this very interesting building, this lecture hall. All these beakers, seems like they're doing kinds of experiments. Uh, interestingly enough, if you bust these, 
eyeballs pop out. And this is something that I forgot to point out, but uh, a lot of people were asking me <laughs> why I didn't show it. I just forgot. Uh, in Bergenworth, you find these same sorts of eyeballs when you bust open stuff there. So, could this lecture hall have something, some connection to Bergenworth? Spoilers, yes. <laughs> <laughs> What a joy it is to behold the divine. It must be such a pleasure. You're in my debt, you know. You're nigh on a beast of the field. But here you are, treading a measure with the gods. <laughs> You're nigh on a beast of the field, but here you are treading a measure among the gods. Not sure what he means by that if we've almost caught a beast on the field or if we are almost a beast ourselves. I'm not sure exactly what he's trying to say by that. But here we are treading a measure with the gods. So he, uh, we can easily tell from that previous uh, cutscene we had, he's considering Amygdala to be a god of sorts, the godhead. <laughs> are your feet as fat as your wits? Oh, cease this dithering. Take the plunge. Throw yourself to the wolves. <laughs> Throw yourself to the wolves. It's got more sense to that than you might realize at first. Explore this building. All kinds of creepy stuff everywhere. We're kind of used to that in this game. How about a jump scare? Hanging from the ceiling, is it? Cannot quite tell what outfit that is. Looks like a church outfit, kind of, but we got the lecture theater key. Key to the lecture theater in the lecture building. Ugh. Today, the two-story lecture building is adrift in the nightmare, but once it was a place of reflection where scholars learned of history and archaeology. But perhaps it still is, as the students in the lecture theater appear to await the return of their professor. Makes you feel like it might have a connection with Bergenworth, and... Second, let me... We picked up this student uniform with a cape earlier. This time we got a student uniform without a cape. Uniform of the students of Bergenworth, a bygone institute learn, a bygone institute learning. Uh, this alternative lacks the thick cape. The Healing Church has its roots in Bergenworth and naturally borrows heavily from its uniform design. E even the bottom part's the same. The part about Willem, they just somehow formatted it differently there. But um, this one has the cape. This is the one we've had, and this one does not. And we've already talked about kind of the, um, what you call it, the history of the uniform and how it pertains to the church and the timeline. This, this place reminds me of Duke's Archives. Like, people were saying other places reminded them of, of Duke's Archives. No, this is the place that reminds me of that. Hello! Hello there. I'm sorry, I know you want me to use the torch. I just wanted to kill that guy, that's all. Madman's knowledge. That, yeah. I think that makes sense, getting Madman's knowledge in the middle of 
uh, a a nightmare about a school. <laughs> Makes sense to me. What's going on in here? Treasure. Oh yeah, this item is pretty nasty. This item, if you're squeamish, you might want to skip ahead about a minute. Red jelly, material used in a holy chalice ritual. Stillborn infants born of a creature of unknown origin, of the type found in some corners of the old labyrinth. Yuck. So dark, man. Stillborn infants, they refer to it as red jelly. Oh my god, fuck you from soft. <laughs> Seriously, so dark. So very, very dark. Now, I picked up a key to the lecture hall. There's a lecture hall over here. I'm going to put away my torch for a little bit. You guys, please just bear with me. If you're watching on mobile, I'm sorry, but... Oh, hello. <laughs> the students would like to come and chat. Die. Oh, that's so satisfying. That dashing R that dashing transformed R2. So satisfying. Oh my god. Mercy go round! I can't remember who suggested that name, but <laughs> Yeah, that trans dashing R2. Pretty strong. Okay, okay, okay. Quick silver bullets all over the place. Dead student. Hey! Hey! What are you spraying on me? Just throwing shit from his beaker. All the bullets that I don't need. All the bullets that I don't need. Fuck your chairs. See, this is some straight up bullshit. This is some straight up unrealistic bullshit right here. I'm sorry, I'm calling them out. Look, man. These desks are all right-handed. You gotta have a fucking left-handed desk at the end of the row. One in nine people are left-handed, man. It's just how it is. I'm left-handed. Uh, although, actually, this is kind of realistic because uh, in Japan, there's not as many left-handed people in my experience. Uh, most kids who probably would grow up left-handed in other places more or less forced to be right-handed. Uh, I mean, it helps a lot when you're trying to learn how to write calligraphy and stuff like that. Things that they do in school, so. Checking out the blackboard. I'm trying to see if there are any secret messages or something. I guess this isn't a shaft animation, but. The Augur of Ibratas. All right. It's another good reason for us to do this first. This is another arcane item. Can't use it on this character because I don't have the 18 arcane required for it. Remnant of the Eldritch Truth encountered at Bergenworth. Use phantasms, the invertebrates known to be augurs of the Great Ones, to partially summon abandoned Ibratas. The initial encounter marked the start of an inquiry into the cosmos from within the old labyrinth and led to the establishment of the choir. This is some more interesting timeline information. This is showing that the choir was established. Uh, it's showing that Ibratas seems to have been found at Bergenworth, like during that era, prior to the founding of the choir. Uh, so this may have been... Lawrence, Lawrence may have been on the expedition that uh, encountered Ibertas. Uh, it's a little bit vague. The initial encounter marked the start of an inquiry. Uh, it doesn't. It's not really clear if they found it in the labyrinth first, although it's pretty much what happened, um, or if they encountered Ibertas at Bergenworth. I don't think that's the case, but. 
Yeah, so that's the Nightmare Lecture Hall first floor. We see there is a second floor up there, but we cannot quite access it just yet. Not just yet. Nightmare Frontier. All right, before we explore the frontier, let's look for something with good poison resistance. Graveguard's got good poison resistance. Black Church is really good. And this is what I'm wanting to look at slow. Ah, actually, I made a mistake. Yeah, 60, 63 on the white church garb. This is what I'm looking at. Slow poison resistance. Are we already... We're already wearing the best. How about that? Probably going to be the white church stuff. 36, 34, but I'd rather wear pants. We'll wear Gascoigne's pants. And I guess something... We'll do something with our top hat. Doesn't really go... Alright, so we're going to want that poison resistance. We're also probably going to want some antidotes. We got six. Let's see if we got any in storage. No, we do not. Take these, though. Replenish that as well. I wish it would just restock your items automatically. Like, if you have one or two of an item left, I wish it would just restock them all. Not just blood vials. Alright, antidotes getting kind of pricey. But it's worth it for us to have as many as we can carry. Let's equip antidotes and also blue elixir is actually going to come in very useful and we'll put some molotovs in there and sedatives. Get lots of items today. Lots of items today. And I think that will cover us. Yeah, let's get back to the frontier. Derp, sorry, in case you're wondering why we're back, I forgot something that... No, not fortify. Yes, repair. What I want to do, uh, I actually want to put on a different gem on our weapon here. So we've got this 18% physical attack. That's really good. We've got this 9.1. It's the best that we have as far as triangles go. But actually right here, we got 9.5 and 3.6 when near death. But I think we picked up a Beast Hunter Damp Gem. See, this attack versus beasts up 14.5%. We're going to use this because one of the, the tougher enemies we're going to be fighting today is actually a beast. It's actually classed as a beast. So we're going to use that. A lot of people have been wondering what the advantage of Beast Hunter is compared to normal physical attack up blood gems. Uh, and the main point is that for equivalent rank gems, the Beast Hunter is going to give you a, a bigger percent increase. Looking out, people notice the masts of those ships down below. Really makes you curious as to where this frontier is exactly. I mean, we know it's in the nightmare, but are they seriously throwing rocks at me? Or did I just walk over something? Okay. Yeah, I just walked over something. It's all good. And here are the annoying sort of beasts we're going to be fighting against. They don't have a lot of health. They do have a lot of asshole. <laughs> they are very, very, very annoying. Like, they can kill you pretty quick. And this place is full of those wandering madnesses. Basically, this game's version of Crystal Lizards. Alright. Here we 
we go. Try to get this. Oh shit, I missed. And they're both after me. Eh, it will. Whew. Oh, I got one of them on a counter hit. Nice. Nice. That is a nicety. Give it. Fire blood gemstone. Ooh, great. We got another waning elemental. Hmm. Down here, you see the first of these large wandering madnesses. These guys will actually attack you. They drop stones. Stones. Souls for stones. And you can see an asshole up there. <laughs> This level can be really, really annoying. It really can. I know it. We're going to try to take it nice and slow. And make it nice and easy. Here you can see a hunter's torch in the distance. I'm going to have to contend with that. Really interesting, you have these... Uh, these messengers here are holding these lanterns. This is a nightmare. So I guess it makes sense for them to appear. Alright, I got that hunter coming this way. It's kind of moves forward enough to trigger him. Come on. You can do it. What then? What then? Oh man, you asshole. And here comes his partner. There's actually two of them. You probably don't want to fight them at the same time. Ah, ah, my timing is bad. I should heal. Shirt. And you did. And we got another lead elixir. And this is kind of a reminder, too, that these lead elixirs. Where'd you go, lead elixir? Damn. <laughs> uh, its recipe for this mysterious con concoction is unknown, but some postulate that it materializes only within the most desperate nightmares. Well, it's a nightmare frontier, and it's a pretty desperate one. If we go back here, it reminds me I actually missed another item right back here. Run back and pick it up real quick. Spoiler, it's the same item. <laughs> it is the same fucking item. Lots of lead elixirs in this place. Makes sense. Kind of, kind of, kind of in a nightmare. Also, this one leads us to a shortcut. Shortcut elevator that we don't have access, that we don't have activated yet. It's just how it goes, I guess. No. We can actually go down into that poison swamp down there, and we will. <laughs> we will eventually have to do that, but not just yet. And first, let's explore around a bit on the top floor. Oh, there we go. Hey. If you don't lock on, uh, I'm going to make a separate video about this, but if you don't lock on, you can actually aim your attacks. People are always ask me why I don't lock, lock on. That's not the only reason. There's lots of reasons, but uh, it's very helpful to know that you can aim those attacks. So please be advised. I hear you. Oh, shit. No. Damn it. Oh my god. So annoying. Still got some blood balls. Alright, we 
could proceed this way, but first, let's walk over here. This, this this area, there's lots of different ways you can explore it. There's lots of different orders you can do things in. Here you see Madman's Knowledge down below. Actually, hold on. But you actually, right up above, there is a ledge, and this is so sneaky. I love the way they do this with, when you look from here, this kind of optical illusion that the path is going to continue, thanks to these stones. Some Indiana Jones and the fucking, well, which, which one was it? Which one was the last movie? Some Indiana Jones bullshit's what it is. And we get a fading lake. That's the uh, fire defense rune, so. And we get a preview. These jerkwads gonna throw boulders. These jerkwads gonna spit at us. And these jerkwads are gonna run away from us. So we have that to look forward to. And if you had just fallen down here, this is where that madman's knowledge would have been. Giving you guys the grand tour of Nightmare Frontier. Alright. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh shit, no he saw me. Ah, fuck. Nope, nope. Oh shit. Damn it, I missed him. Oh ah, well, it's not really a big deal. I don't think any of these guys actually have chunks. I really wish they all had chunks, because damn bloodstone chunks are kind of hard to come by. This area is one of the, the ones where the blue elixir really helps you out a lot. Um, it makes you kind of transparent, and this actually does work on enemy aggro ranges. So, he's not going to be able to see us until we get very, very close. Which we can use to kill him and him and then if we're quick about it get up here and kill this guy too so very useful in this area there's not a whole lot of places where using this versus uh, the enemy AI like the NPCs helps that much but whenever you're dealing with ranged enemies, it can be very, very useful. And these guys have long range. We're going to walk up here and grab this item. Oh no! <laughs> Cold blood flower bud. Kind of fitting that the day that I'm recording this, 420, we pick up some flower bud. I mean... Anyway, pale vegetation that commonly grows on cold blood in a place long ago abandoned. Grows on cold blood. Well, there is a corpse right here in a place long abandoned. Okay. Makes you wonder how long ago this place was abandoned. It's frontier. And how is it connected to Bergenworth? Ugh. So many mysteries. Let's get him. Let's get him. Also, let's just sneak up on this guy. Worth it. Yeah, I'm a big fan of blue elixirs around here. Poiseless enemies, or enemies that don't have super armor, really, really struggle against the Blade of Mercy. Really struggle. The struggle. It's real. More lead elixirs. Power just blinked. That's really scary. I hope my recording is okay. <laughs> Thankfully, I'm using a power conditioner. Here we go. Don't you do it. Oh, oh no! Shortcut! 
<laughs> that guy exists solely for the purpose of leading you to the shortcut, I believe. This is back at the beginning of the level. See, these guys we killed all the way back at the beginning. Remember that tower from the beginning, too. So now, we don't want to deal with this nonsense. We ain't got to deal with this nonsense. We just run right up this broken tomb. Stone. <laughs> and just over here, is a jerk. Jerk, I say. Let me make sure. We came from this way, right? Yeah. All right. I need to run back up this side and finish this off. There he goes. Ah. Jerk. Damn, jerk. Damn, jerk. Ugh. Never been killed by one, but I have been annoyed by them a lot. Really cool just to be able to look down from above here. Actually, I guess functionally, you can use this to go back through this area backwards if you wanted to. If you didn't have any blue elixirs and you just wanted to sprint up here, get the shortcut, and then use it to work your way backwards through those giants, I guess you could do that too. Hmm. Huh. Never really thought about it. Really, that's another, like, really cool trick of Soulsborne level design is the fact that the levels you can unlock shortcuts but they also often think about the fact that you can traverse them backwards like it just there's lots of little interesting interactions especially with the one-way movement that we've discussed before we're looking down I guess that's the beginning part of the level there yeah we already crossed that bridge we crossed that bridge when we got there and there's a treasure with a bunch of shining coins leading us to it, and just above that is a jerk. Big, stupid spider jerk. A trusty jerk. A jerk hyena. What I'm trying to say is, that's patches. <laughs> Spider-Man patches. <laughs> but before we deal with Spider-Man patches... Ah! I missed! No! can have a look down here this massive swamp here we see these two guys one on the right next to that cave one on this rocky uh, point <laughs> on the left we can drop down this way if we want to go into the swamp from this direction we're actually gonna do patches fucking event goddamn patches hate patches Coins down here lead to the event. I'm not going to do that just yet, though. First, definitely want to take out this third kind of hidden rock thrower. Oh, I didn't kill him. Oh, no. And that's going to be another annoyance to contend with. Here's another way we can go here. So there's, like, no less than three ways to get down through this level. Clockwise metamorphosis. This is another. This is a really good one. This is the ten percent version. So, it's really good. All right. I don't really want to do this event. I like skipping it, but I'm playing for you guys. So we're gonna do it. We're gonna get these antidotes ready, though. This way to witness a miracle. Messengers, you know it's a lie. Can you not read? Why don't you inform me? Ugh. Shining coins. Lucky 
lucky scamp. The gift of the Godhead cometh! <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who have not played Souls and have started with Bloodborne as your first kind of from game, um, Patches is a recurring character. He's just a cameo. Doesn't mean the worlds are connected or anything like that. Just a recurring character. He's even been in Armored Core. So it's just a cameo. But he pops up and he tends to kick the player down a cliff. And cause all kinds of fucking headaches. That's just his thing. It's what he does. Urgh. Eh. Take multiple trips if I want to get all those guys. I probably should have molotov them. It might have worked. Not a whole lot of point in antidoting much here. Oh. Saw those kind of messenger looking things within these guys. Get them all. Good deal. Notice the poison doesn't do much damage at all to us. We got that resist. Alright. But now... We need to change... To... Frenzy resist. Because there is an asshole enemy. We may die here. I'm not going to worry too much about it if we do. Where are you? Oh no. Notice our frenzy build up. Going crazy. Gonna use a sedative. Those enemies are very powerful. They will frenzy you very, very quickly. We got the messenger's gift. We got the messenger's gift, y'all. Hold on. There we go. Yeah. No, not wave. Oh man. Uh, I needed to pick a better gesture. Yeah. Messenger's gift. A strange gift from the messengers, inhabitants of the dream who revere the brave hunters. Used to envelop oneself in a black nightmarish mist, then transform into a messenger. The illusion is a parlor trick, and any large movement will break the spell. To preserve the guys, proceed slowly. Um, you basically... You start looking like a messenger, man. Pretty cool. Hold on one second while I put my poison resist back on. All right, there we go. <laughs> it's I guess it's mostly intended for uh, use against other players. I don't think it actually works on any enemies. And let me swap back to my antidotes before I forget. Oh, this place is so annoying. Uh, in case you're wondering why I'm moving so slow, if you haven't played the game, it's because of this fucking swamp. It actually does slow your movement, though you can still roll. Thank God. I'm like Demon Souls. You think Bloodborne's hard, man? Demon Souls has got some asshole moments. Blood Elixir. Antidotes. Elixirs. How did I all of that miss? Oh my goodness. Mercy back. I'm bringing mercy back.
And now this shits us out into another bad situation. We're used to this at this point. I probably should have waited on that antidote. Oh, there we go. Okay. I used the blue elixir to hide myself from these jerkwads that throw boulders. You guys probably figured that there. Oh shit. Ooh, so stylish. And I'll use another one. And we can actually get behind this guy. Antidote. Before we, we actually fight him. There are not one, but two wandering madnesses here. Ow, no! Shit. Once again, that's not really what I wanted. Oh, he seems to have died somehow anyway. I wonder if the poison got him. Clear Deep Sea. I can't remember which resistance Clear Deep Sea gives. It gives poison resistance. I actually should have put a poison resistance rune on now that I'm thinking about it, so... Whoops. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm going to save my other blue elixir. And we are going to hop down here, though. Roll in here. Grab ourselves some frenzied cold blood. Not really going to worry with the rest of this stuff. I don't see any particular purpose in fighting these guys. And we got some more cold blood flower bud. We got some more bud. And a dope blood vial. See, this place ain't that bad. It's not that bad, except this is the worst part. Sedatives. Uh, I tend to not fight this guy. There is one of those winter lanterns over there. He patrols this cliff. It's a real asshole. I'd rather go around. And yes, I will top myself off just that little bit of damage. Because frenzy ain't nothing to fuck with. You don't see me. You do see me. Fuck. Sedative. Ooh. Ooh. And it keeps building up to drop down there, but we don't need to do that. Oh, sedative. Oh my god, that was so close. Frenzy is such bullshit. Oh, there you are. I was wondering where it was. It was right there. It was literally right there. We're out of the poison. Weird that the Graveguard stuff has good frenzy resistance. I mean, if you're a madman scream murderer, you would think you would be frenzied easily, but... More lead elixirs. Hope you like lead elixirs. We heard you like lead elixirs. We put some lead elixir in your blue elixir. Hello. Oh, no. Oh, thank God. <laughs> that was careless of me. That was very, very careless of me. And we don't have our poison resistance. So we're not done with the poison stuff yet. Oh, man. The fuck is wrong with me? And that is how a new player does this. <laughs> Chase after a damn wandering madness and fall into the poison swamp. It's like, it's like I've never even played the game. It's like he's never even played the game. 
Oh, you die. I'll take out my frustrations on this crawler right here. Alright. Notice, though, that the uh, slow poisoning of the swamp, it's got a really low damage value to it. I mean, it, it's not really that bad overall. This clearly the way to the boss, so that's not the way we want to go. We ain't done exploring yet. Don't go fight the boss. Don't go chasing waterfalls until you unlock an elevator, man. Until you got a shortcut. Alright, let's just go back to style. Well, we'll do it later. So the blood vials, I kind of needed them. Jump off. Jump off then. Come on. Jump off. Jump. The fuck kind of fire attack was that, man? Jump. Off. Okay. Walk off. The earth. No. Okay. Damn Loron Silver Beasts. Oh my, did I just kind of reveal where this area might ac actually be? Uh, this is information you get from the guide. Uh, Loron Silver Beast. Hmm. Elevator! All right, it was it was long, it was long. There were many trials and tribulations along the way, but we did it, man. We did it, guy. We did it, buddy. We did it, pal. We've explored Nightmare Frontier fairly thoroughly. I think there's a couple little items that we haven't picked up just yet uh, down in that last little bit, but for the most part, we are at the boss, who we will probably fight next time. Because first, I got to go back and do some fashion born. Alright, before we do anything, let's repair our stuff. Repair, repair, repair. Wish there was a repair all. Is there a repair all? No. And let's equip that rune before I forget to do it, because this is a really big... Let's see, we don't have another physical defense up. This is going to go from... 1228 to 1287 uh, and we have 1170 without it so we're starting to add a good chunk of HP with this it's a good deal we got a lot of blood echoes from that area uh, we might that color white is just not the right one that is so Ugh, why would you do that to me <laughs> No. Eh. No. I'm a little dolly. Fuck it. I'll go without the defense. Shit. Uh, this... We could stock up on antidotes, although... Not a whole lot of more... Lot more poison threats to deal with right now, so I'm just gonna wait on that. We still have plenty of blood vials. Um, I might actually take this opportunity... Tone Prospector stuff's getting kind of expensive. God dang, that gold Ardeo, man. So expensive. Go ahead and start buying some fashion stuff. Kanehurst Helm actually looks pretty good with that Executioner set, ironically. <laughs> Generic. We'll rock it like this for a little bit. So once again, this has been Yarnum FM. I am Marcus. Thank you one more time for all of the support, guys. Uh, I'm, I'm really glad that a lot of people kind of feel the same way I do about not only this game, this series of games, but games in general. Uh, and in terms of how we approach the design and appreciating them, it's very validating to me. So thank you very much for all the support. Um, I will catch you guys on another Yarnum FM.